Good morning, everybody. My name is Marnie Primer. I am the Executive Director of Mobility 21 in Southern California. Um, I'm also the chair this year of the National Alliance of Public Transit Advocates, um, which means all of you are going to join NAPTA when we're done here. Yay! Yay. <laughs> NAPTA is a, a coalition of organizations and individuals across the United States who are dedicated to um, increasing the amount of transit that we have um, here in our communities. So this is a fantastic opportunity for um, you all to learn from some of the folks who are uh, experts in organizing, experts in coalition building, um, and a great opportunity for us to hear what's going on in the Metro Detroit area and give you maybe some practical solutions to some of the problems uh, that you might be facing as you try and go about um, bringing back transit, because I know you had it once, uh, to the Metro Detroit area. Uh, a little bit about me before um, we get into uh, today's presentations, um, just to give you a background of, of why I'm engaged with NAPTA. Uh, my coalition is a seven county coalition representing 21 million Americans in Southern California. Um, we are a public-private partnership. We bring both the transportation providers and the leading business groups in each of our seven counties to the table. Um, our main mission is to bring increased funding for all modes of transportation to Southern California um, because what you may not realize but what we keenly feel is that there is oftentimes an ABC uh, way of feeling and that's anywhere but California when you uh, go back to Congress and look for money. So our region found that we were doing a lot of infighting and we were our own worst enemy when it came to uh, being successful at attracting funding for transportation in Southern California. And um, so our senators, after uh, the last round of, of uh, transportation funding, asked us to please get our act together so that they could help us better. Because as uh, Randy rightly pointed out yesterday, there's still only two senators for the state of California, uh, just as there are for the state of Michigan. And uh, in order for them to be effective at advocating for us, we have to be effective at advocating for ourselves. So we are, as I said, multimodal. We work together with the Automobile Club of Southern California. We work with our MPO, uh, which is called SCAG. It's the largest metropolitan planning organization um, in the United States. We work with the, um, the transportation agencies who plan and program and deliver uh, transportation capital projects and operate our transit systems. We work with the business community and the engineering firms and contractors who are actually creating the jobs um, that capital investment in transportation supports. And uh, we work with the community who is going to be benefiting from having a robust, safe, reliable, and convenient transit system. I know Denny talked to you yesterday about what LA uh, City and LA County is doing to increase the amount of transit that is available um, in that part of our region, but there are also some urban, or excuse me, rural and suburban areas outside of uh, downtown LA that are making uh, strides in bringing increased commuter rail, increased bus transit, um, new light rail systems, new streetcar systems to uh, those parts of our region as well. The reason we're multimodal is because, well, if you've ever been to California, you know traffic is lousy there. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we can't build our way out of it with roads alone. So transit is a huge component of uh, making our, our transit system um, and our population more mobile. We have an aging population. We have uh, a large student population, um, both of which is going to require transit. We have transit-dependent riders who need transit to get to their jobs. Um, we have a disabled community that need access services uh, to be able to get to their medical appointments, to be able to go shopping, to be able to interact in our society. And those are all essential parts of what transit does for our community. I think what might be interesting to you to learn is that the Automobile Club of Southern California is an active supporter of transit in our region and has put money into the measures that Denny was talking to you about yesterday, which largely fund transit. Well, why would they do that? Because they value transit as a benefit to motorists. 
it wasn't an, an, an accident that Randy stood up here yesterday and said, well, everybody supports transit in California for the other guy. That's absolutely true. Uh, we are a car culture in large part in California, um, and we do love our single occupancy vehicles, but at the same time, we like options. We like the freedom of being able to choose transit when that's the most convenient and cost-effective method for us to get from point A to point B. Um, and we like it even better when our neighbors choose that so we can be in our vehicles by ourselves. So, um, you know, it, never overlook uh, the power of altruism, uh, but also never overlook the power of self-interest. So uh, that's a little bit about uh, my, my background, my coalition's background. Um, we have very disparate interests within the Southern California region. With 21 million people in seven counties, you might imagine it's not a ho homogenous group of, of individuals. There are, there are different priorities, there are different perspectives that we bring to the table. The reason why we've been successful is because first, we all come to the table wearing our Mobility 21 hat. We don't come wearing our you know, transit agency hat or our Chamber of Commerce hat. We, when we come into the room, are there to work towards our common purpose, which is bringing increased investment to our region. We're there for creating jobs. We're there for, what, for doing what's best for the region. Now, all of those things are informed by the perspectives that we bring to the table, but they're not dominated by it. That also means that there is a commitment to consensus building. And each of the partners that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis is dedicated, is passionate about reaching consensus. And they're fiercely protective of their partners' um, points of view because they know that their partners will be protective of their point of view when it matters as well. And what that means is we have 12 voting members for our board. If one of them has a, an issue and it's a got to fall on my sword issue, we back off as a coalition because that's that important to that member. Conversely, if we have one member that is, you know, not really wanting to move forward on something and the 11 others are really passionate about it, that one member is going to say, well, you know, my board disagrees, but you go ahead and move forward. We're not going to stand in your way. And so that, that respect, that give and take is really important in our context and is probably something that you can learn from here as you go about coalition building. So today, we're going to hear the practical side of campaigning. Um, all of you are here because you care about transit. You want to see transit come back to this region. And each of the speakers today has a track record of helping their region to bring transit uh, to reality. And uh, we're extremely lucky to have um, Tom Shrout with us today. I know you all heard from him yesterday, and I'm not going to go over his, his bio again. It's, it's in your, your introduction. But I think the big takeaway that I got from Tom yesterday was, um, you know, Failure is temporary, but transit is forever. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Um, quick show of hands. How many were here yesterday? I see lots of familiar faces. Okay. So, and if you weren't here yesterday, okay, we're not going to repeat anything. You're going to have to catch up. <laughs> um, yesterday, as you recall, we talked a little bit about building a coalition. And I know you've done a lot of work here to try to get this group together. And, but what we want to do is take a step back and get some interaction going about what, uh, not only what it takes to build a coalition, but who should be involved in the coalition. So my trusty assistant, Deborah, is gonna be handing out some paper. We're gonna do a little exercise. And the exercise will be this. Um, we're gonna take approximately two minutes to, um, for you to, write down the categories of organizations or the communities of organizations that
could be involved in a transit coalition. For instance, you would write down higher education as opposed to writing down University of Detroit Mercy. So, so there's some obvious ones. I'll give you two, higher education, healthcare. I know you've done some work on this, but let's see if we get any new ones. Um, so let's take a couple of minutes and see what you come up with. Okay, now the next thing we'd like for you to do is, is um, come together with, you know, three or four people that you're seating, seated, seated, seated around and consolidate your list. So, yes. So there's going now to be a group list. There's now going to be a group list. So if there's three or four people, then you're going to share and you're going to write on one list the groups. Okay?
Identify somebody in your group that will kind of report in. Let's try to now start to get some of these groups up on the board. So I'm looking way back in the back. Your group. Tell, give, us, give us three three that you came up with. Uh, Faith-based? Okay. We, And for the final one, we just decided to combine a couple uh, recreation slash active transportation groups, like walking and biking advocacy groups. Okay, good. Now, now keep track of what's. We might get back to you, so we'll see. Okay, group over in here. Oh. Make sure you pick some new ones. Uh, labor unions. Utility companies, and the auto companies. Okay, explain to me how that's different from business. It may be, I'm, not, I'm asking. Oh, I was just kind of picking off the list. And okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, let's come down here. So in addition to what's up there, um, environmental groups, transit advocates, <coughs> entertainment uh, slash hospitality, so like uh, sports teams here in, in the Detroit area, uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, casinos, the disabled community. Okay. I just want to answer that question, at least from my perspective, about the difference between the auto companies and, say, utilities or other industries. Um, the auto companies have kind of a talent challenge. They 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 need transit because they need to be able to have vibrant urban places that can attract world-class talent. The utilities are, and, and companies like that have large fixed assets that they don't want to have to replicate in the hinterland, have a strong desire to maintain and build density so they can 
it's just a better cost model for them. Uh, who hasn't reported, you guys? Yes. Marie? So we have a long list, but I'll just, oh, okay. Charter schools, as opposed to just K-12 schools, because they have just a different setup. Landscape architects and planners, it would be landscape architects slash planners. We never get asked to do anything. And um, we added the tea party. As opposed to politics, political parties. I think, I think it would be um, political parties. Yeah, why not? Because what we'll do, we'll come back around and then what are the specifics under, under each of these? Okay, cool. All right, we've got youth groups, uh, senior groups, and uh, neighborhood associations. We got uh, uh, economic development, organizations and chambers of commerce I don't know whether you count that as one uh, they, they have some overlap but uh, maybe they're two uh, I'll count it as one so we have more to say <laughs> <laughs> ethnic groups you know NAACP Hispanic Arabic uh, do I get another one one more okay one more uh, got to find one that's not up there Environmental groups. We have it. Oh, we get. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, governments. Yeah. Local governments. Well. Okay, we have a, just a couple different ones. Um, one would be the airport authority. Um, foundations and civic groups, maybe just foundations of civic groups may fall under something else that's up there already. I think I would separate them. Okay, foundations. And we speci I, I know that somebody mentioned ethnic groups, but we specifically mentioned immigrant Groups, so specifically the non uh, sorry undocumented who may be sort of um, galvanized by wanting to participate in the coalition process. Has every group oh. had a chance to report once? Hospitals, the healthcare. It's all right. Yeah. Riders, consumers, however you want to label them. And then also, riders, not riders. Riders. <laughs> English teacher. <laughs> no, that's my English pronunciation. Okay. Um, and then those service providers, aging and disability service providers. Okay, let's. Oh, yeah. Um, we, you guys did a great job, so we don't have much to add. Um, I would just say maybe to break out chambers of commerce a little bit to business associations in general, in case there's places that don't have a chamber. Um, Youth groups, I might add more specifically, uh, college students. And then we just decided uh, the media as well needs to be brought in at some level. OK, does anybody want to volunteer some things that you have that you don't see up here? Yes. K-12. Uh, community service organizations, I think they're a little different than the neighborhood groups. Um, professional associations, like engineers and dentists and doctors or lawyers, and you know, they, they have a lot of organization in them. Um, 
engineering firms was that's that's a business, but they have a s special role in providing technical ex uh, expertise and interpretation sometimes. And I'm an engineer. And, and invested interest in money. That's true yeah. too. The, the, some of them, yeah. Um, foundations. Got yes. that. Got it. Sorry. Uh, okay, Leo, let's give it to other folks. Uh, developers. Oh, yeah, realtors would be good too. Um, and uh, AAA. When you say AAA, do you mean area agents, aging, or? The no, I mean uh, the automobile club. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, um, oh, we had one more on here, sorry. They fall on the aging service providers. I'll, I'll let you go. Let's go. Okay. One more is missing, transit providers, both public and private. Yeah, I was wondering when someone was going to get there. <laughs> They're so invisible to us. Yeah. Isn't that service providers? No, that's the aging. Um, public health organizations. It's different than hospitals. It's more like the organization I work for, which is like the Michigan Fitness Foundation. Is this where we can add Complete Streets advocacy organizations okay, and cycling so organizations? Anything else new? We think we got all, yeah. Just a branch off the government for regional governments, like the county or if, 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 you know, some kind of kind of really government, but if there was a is there a reason why I'm being ignored? No. All right. So nothing more new, right? Um, if you can add disability on the service providers, you wrote aging, but I mentioned aging and disability. Service providers on the right and the right column, on the bottom, the bottom. Service, right there, service providers, it says aging, please add okay. disability. And So you want aging and what, excuse disability. me, disability? Okay, service professors. Okay, so now tell me what, oh. there's probably two things that could be done here and let's figure out what we want to do first. One of the things is to look at this and to say, do we have duplications anywhere? So are there any of these that probably should be combined? The same token, are there some of these that are so big that we should separate them out? Because there's a lot of groups within it. So those are the two things. So does it, do you want so to say? and have biking separate because it's so big. Got it. Can I ask a question, a process question? We're developing this list for what reason? Because that will help me. I'm sorry. No. A uh, uh, process question is we're developing this list for what purpose? Because that might be helpful in, as we're trying to see if certain things can be combined. Well, my thought is, the folks that live here, I go home at 3.30 this afternoon, but the folks that are going to be staying here working on this, this might be helpful to you as you think about pulling your coalition together because the next step we want to identify not the, not the grouping, but under here might be something like the downtown Detroit uh, partnership or something like that. So the, the Detroit folks would need to de identify the specific organizations under here. So that's the next step for you to think about very specific organizations. You know, one of the things we do know is that everybody likes to be invited to the table at the beginning of the process. And sometimes coalitions get formed and they're, you know, months into the process and then all of a sudden it's, they realize someone's missing from the table. And then many times when they're asked to join at that point, they, they feel like they've been, missed, they've been missing out on, on much and they're left out. 
So the idea is that before you go any further, make sure that everybody that is, has been invited to the table, they may not show, but let's make sure they're invited. So again, looking at this list, are there any that you would like to separate out or any that you think are duplicates? Um, sort of un under businesses, there are a number of uh, provider or operators of transit, uh, what you might call um, hired operators like uh, Veolia, Keolis, Herzog, um, and uh, they can often bring a certain amount of uh, money to the table. And so they might be worth uh, mentioning. So transit providers, does that get it here? Uh, it's not, not quite the same. I mean, okay. when I see transit providers, I think DDOT, AATA, SMART. Okay. But, but these people are, are national or worldwide, and, and so you, you might have to reach out to get to them. Okay. And you think it would go under business, or, it, or it should it be separate? Whatever you think. I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, just, that also would include like um, bus manufacturers. Um, we have a lot of, several of those in the state. Um, and like trailways and those, uh, Greyhound, I don't know. Um, that wasn't why I took the mic. Right. <laughs> um, no, wait a second. Uh, yeah. Um, I was thinking, we have several authorities like the um, Huron Clinton Metropolitan Authority that operates a huge park system. I know some people like to take a bus with a bike and go there. You can't do that now, but if you, I know my former staff over there, she, that was her main complaint. Um, and so, so there's several authorities like that. There's a, you know, a Cobo Hall authority that runs our convention center. And so they're not just business, they're sort of more specific than that, I okay. think. I think, I think if we have time for one last thing, why don't we, one of the things we did in St. Louis and I had it in our presentation, we, we're doing the same thing in, in another market currently. Um, the point I made yesterday, in a low budget campaign, you gotta have volunteers. You can't get everything done by yourself. So what we, had done, what we did, and what we might think about doing next is, What's the name of the individual who could head up the engineering, messaging, uh, not messaging, but outreach to identify the firms to, that might lead to raising money, which might lead to email list and so on. So the folks here in Detroit, would, would that be a useful exercise to kind of wrap this up? Well, we could do it another way. Why don't we divide into three groups? And group one will take this list, group two will take this list, and group three will take this list. Can we do that? I'm, I'm not clear on what, what name you're looking for. It's someone who would work that, that dimension, or yeah. someone who is a leader in that dimension that would need to? Well, there's two, there's two models. There's the worker bee, or the workhorse, or the show horse. That's what you're talking about. If you get a workhorse, it's the assistant to the president of whatever engineering company who's actually going to do the work. If it's the show horse, it's the president of the engineering firm who may do it, may or may not do it. <clears throat> We can do that too. If you find that, that's, that's something that has we, to be done too. We have about 10 or 15 minutes and I, I want to leave a product behind for you. Five minutes. So what is most more important? Would it be more important to go through under disabled and come up with the groups that need to be involved or would it be more important to think about people? I would suggest allowing each 
individual or group to come up with resources, whether individual or group, for sake of time, and then we can then work it. Because if I was given the first column and I don't know anybody in engineering or half of those, my group would not benefit that I do know in other areas, either a leader or an organization. I don't, I don't want to completely derail this, but that one of the questions is, we actually did reach out, and we have a list of 600 people, we actually did reach out and invite to this. Perhaps even more important is tips that you guys might offer in terms of what would, how do we bring them to the table? Other than just putting out an invitation, um, how do we persuade some of these folks that transit is something that they want to be involved in, or even if they agree that transit's good, if it's not their central focus, uh, how do we persuade them to, to be a part of making it happen? That would be the other question I'd like to ask to you guys. Does that appear to be useful? Would that be more useful to you? I like the way you were going with this, is to identify. I do. I like that. Okay. Because we can't, well, number one, I, I think that that is part of the effort of the Regional Transit Authority to produce something that we can sell to these people. And in order to know who we have to sell it to, we have to know who they are. So I think this is a very useful exercise. And, and uh, Chris is... <laughs> Just hand that back to <laughs> And so I, I think it's a useful exercise myself. Okay. Divide this up and let's just see either people yes, or organizations, either one, anything you get written down would be probably a value. Okay. So let's just mark that, and this will be group one, group two. Go ahead. Yeah. We'll the list. Go ahead. So, should we just focus on that? But if we know somebody in the other area, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. 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 Put anything down if you said know somebody that needs to be at the table but this would give it a little bit more you know a, a start to something okay so um in order to keep us on track and to make this exercise as uh, effective as possible for you all um, we're going to carve out an extra 15 minutes for this part of the discussion. Um, and that'll just push us push us back a little bit in some of the other speakers. But I think this is really important. This is the hard work that needs to be done. Um, so we'll go ahead and take, why don't we say 10 minutes um, for, the, for you all to discuss. And then we'll have a five minute sort of report out at the end. Uh, and then we can move the discussion along. If we want to come back here, we certainly can. <laughs> okay, uh, we got about five minutes. Let's see what we've learned. If we can come back together, please. Okay, here's an example um, after the meeting how you might want to consider organizing this. You know, you got education, here's some of the groups you mentioned, same way with transit, a bigger category, uh, business chambers, business associations, auto companies, utilities. Whether that's useful to think about it in that way and con con continuing filling, filling that out, that's up to you. So real quickly. Then after you do that, so then you say we have a category of colleges list all the colleges. And then for each college, then you start to say, who should we contact? And do we have a champion? Do we have a show horse? Do we have some workhorses? And you start developing this. It is a work in progress. It's constantly changing. But then you can go to other groups and you can present this and say, well, do you see another group that we've missed? Is there a college that we've missed? Within the college, are we, are, do we have the right people involved? And then it goes on and on from there. But eventually, <coughs> what you want is some person 
from, let's say, the colleges. It's going to take the college community and will be responsible for it and make sure that every time information needs to get out, that person will see that all of the colleges get that information. So you're looking eventually for some workhorses that would be responsible for each of these areas. Okay? Let's hear, let's hear back real quickly, this group down here. Uh, just give us a couple, so we okay. Do. We have group four under, um, so, uh, oh. I think under um, youth groups, we had uh, boys and girls clubs, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Campfire Girls. We have a Campfire Girls camp up north, 4-H. Um, and then we have, um, I thought specifically, there's other groups like this, but like the Mosaic Youth Theater is a big organization here, and there's uh, several of those groups, but they travel a lot, so we need a good transit system. So they're, and they're very active. Um, and then there's school music, lots of school music groups, bands, and that sort of thing, um, and lots of school clubs. Under um, college students, we have fraternities, sororities. Uh, we didn't know if there were any SDS organizations still <laughs> out there. <laughs> Those of you who are old enough to remember what that is, I suppose. Okay, Mary, that's good. <laughs> Why don't we figure out what we're going to do with your notes okay. so that uh, they get compiled. Another group? Who's next? Who's next? Uh, utility, DTE, consumers, ITC, um, cable companies. You know the DTE and consumers, they have government liaisons that that would be, uh, you know, call your state rep and find out who the government liaison is to find out who we need to contact um, for all the, um, programs that they run that might apply and be interested. Auto, uh, of course, the big three. Um, anyone else who's maybe building here? I don't know, Toyota? So, um, zip car, perhaps dealerships. People need rides to and from when they're getting their car repaired um, or from a car rental. Um, community service, um, slightly unclear on uh, what this was going for, um, whether this was like AmeriCorps or high school volunteer programs to get people to help volunteer? Okay, you all, you'll have to work that out. Again, we, we make sure we get your notes. Okay. All right. Another group? So we had five and six. Uh, <laughs> um, Let's see, so foundations, there's so many of them in the, in the area, the Community Foundation, um, the Jewish Funds, United Way, et cetera. There's already foundations involved in this group. Um, we kind of talked about how you could um, reach ethnic groups, and one of the suggestions was to talk to the Ethnic Media Partnership because the editors of those various papers are very actively involved in their communities. Um, and then, of course, for economic development, the DEGC, public health organizations, county public health departments, and um, schools within, within universities, because they do a lot of research and outreach in communities. Um, a small business association for business organizations. Um, I mean, yeah, there's just a bunch of them, so we have. Cool. Anybody else want to say something? We're group number one. We're first. And our group looked at engineering, Engineering Society of Detroit, Society of Automotive Engineers, so there's, there's mega groups that have thousands of engineers in them. And then there's companies like uh, Parsons, Brinker, Hoff, and URS, and Giffels Webster, our sponsor last night, we had to include them. Uh, then higher education, there are, uh, we've got a list of 30 universities and community colleges, but then there's also overarching uh, interest groups like the Michigan Engineering Deans have a, have a group, the Deans of Arts and Science have a group there, and there's, there's a lot of different groups that connect the, the universities together. Some, some may have a special interest in, in transit. Um, healthcare, certainly hospitals come to mind, but uh, there's a lot of other service providers like, uh, like dialysis units and physical therapy and rehab and methadone clinics, etc. 
And then there's overarching organizations there as well, like, like dental associations and, and medical associations that serve the various individual providers that need to get their, their people to their, their, uh, to, to their service. Um, Faith-based, and, and where the, what's the word, gamaliel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Moses. I never heard that word before. I, I learned something today, I can go home now. Uh, the Archdiocese of Detroit for Catholic and the Jewish associations and Islamic associations. So each faith as a, as a organization. But then there's, there's uh, campus ministry organizations at universities, which is kind of an overlap with the, the universities. But um, they, they often have service learning projects that, that you can get a lot of volunteers there. Uh, large individual churches. And then the Jesuit order has a service experience for graduates. They go out into cities and they, they, they try to change what's going on in America. So uh, get some of those. Uh, the business, we, uh, we said, well, especially the employer, people that are, businesses that need employers, employees, uh, manufacturing, Rock Financial downtown, uh, businesses that offer transit support, uh, malls and airports, uh, just airlines. Um, but then also there's businesses that are more, they're also focused on, on customers, individual retailers that, that want the customers to, to come in. Um, and then labor unions, you just list all the labor unions. Uh, you know, that's, that's pretty straightforward, I think, unless we, is there, is there an overarching council of labor unions? Yeah. Okay, I think that, that, that covers us pretty good. So the point is, as Leo... Okay. All, right. All right, I'll be brief. Um, we are group three and... Yay! All right, <laughs> and <laughs> we uh, first we're talking about realtors. We probably have a Southeast Michigan Board of Realtors and also reaching out to um, realtor schools. Uh, then we had the massive group of transit advocates. I won't bore you guys with the details, but um, Transportation Riders United, Warriors on Wheels, Transform are just a few uh, ideas, Friends of Wally. Um, and skipping down to entertainment, we were talking about um, not only reaching out to the major teams in the area, but also kind of getting into the amateur leagues because there's a lot of really well organized um, amateur groups in the area. Um, landscaping, we we're just talking about um, Marie over here and uh, Michigan Association of Planners. So I will leave it at that for you guys. Good. And the, the, the example of moving forward, Leo mentioned all these engineering groups. Some of them I heard of, some of them I don't. In your coalition, you might say, Leo, you're in charge of engineering. You figure it out. Who needs to be coming to the meetings? Who we need to be reaching out to otherwise? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I uh, had a good comment earlier. There's a way, you know, putting this out on Google Documents, letting people have access, filling in the details, and your database will get bigger and bigger. So, with that, I think we'll wrap it up. She has a question. I just have a quick question. Yeah. Um, in terms of, like, process and... Oh, in terms of like process and how you narrow your focus, like do you have any advice? Because I mean like some organizations have certain amount of capacity and I think coalition yeah. building is really uh, hard work and how do you work um, on managing, how, what advice do you have on narrowing focus or like when there's conflict, like you know everyone has interest, yeah. so like how do you navigate that? <clears throat> well part of the thing is uh, coalitions take time because you have to meet and meet and meet to get acquainted and build trust I think uh, among the various members of the coalition. Some people won't come to meetings but they want to be involved, that's okay. This is kind of a, my experience with coalitions, they're kind of messy. People come, they go, they'll do work, they won't do work. You need, you need either uh, a staff person or a little uh, steering committee to kind of figure all this stuff out. I mean, while the coalition brings in 50 or 100 people to talk and exchange ideas, you still need to have management of that coalition. So that's really important to figure that out. And then I think um, 
putting together a written plan, the coalition having a written plan that everyone agrees to. I don't like group writing. I do like one person putting their ideas down, sharing it with a small group, and then keep expanding the number of people who have input into a document. So, so have some leadership of your coalition, have a plan for your coalition, uh, delegate through your coalition, understand it's gonna be messy, um, and understand it's gonna be dynamic. People are gonna come and go and, and be involved. Uh, one last piece of advice. Um, sometimes coalitions work best if there's a, a uh, stated objective. It helps them keep together. Everyone can buy into the outcome. Um, if that's not clear, I think coalition has a chance to kind of fragment. So you need to know what those goals are, have an idea of what the time frame is, and uh, make it all work, figure it out. Thank you very much, Tom. And the lovely and talented assistant. So I, I think what you have here is sort of the building blocks, right, for how you're gonna pull your coalition together. And your next step might be, okay, well, what is our next step? How are we going to organize all of those people? There's lots of different organizations up here, lots of different groups. It's gonna take some time just to populate that list and make it manageable. I think the Google Docs idea is fabulous. I use Google Docs all the time uh, when I'm collaborating with my team and I think it's great. I will just say, you know, you don't need a huge staff. Um, I, I am a team of me and one other person and we manage our, our coalition. And it took about five years of the coalition existing before they hired a staff person. So you can do this on a volunteer basis if you have somebody that's passionate and committed and you have a member of your coalition who's willing to donate staff time um, for one of their, their staff members. You can, you can make it happen uh, before you have a, a paid staff person, it does, it does work. 